Now at 6, we're on a weather watch alert for showers and storms tomorrow afternoon and evening. We're going to talk timing and impact for you coming up. A construction worker hit and killed on the job, and now the family of the suspect claims it was all an accident. What they say happened. And an explosion inside an apartment complex in the middle of the night. The building's manager shows us inside, and the damage still left behind. Plus, what investigators think caused the boom. And for the first time since deciding to stay in stores, UConn coach Dan Hurley is answering our questions. What he says it was like the morning he made his final decision. Fox 61, Connecticut's news station begins with a weather watch alert. And first up, we want to get you ready for tomorrow as rain is on the way. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brent Hardy. And I'm Emma Woolforce. Our weather team has set a weather watch alert for tomorrow as those storms could potentially impact your commute and even your evening plans. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank is in the Weather Center now with a closer look at the impact. Rachel. Yeah, it's going to be a dry start to the day tomorrow, but a stormy finish. The warmth and humidity going to help feed into these thunderstorms as they're moving into the state. So while the rain is quiet right now. Here's what it could look like as we head into around this time tomorrow. So let's talk about your headlines. While there could be a scattered shower or thunderstorm at any point during the afternoon and evening tomorrow, I think the main risk for a strong or potentially even severe storm would be between 3 to 8 p.m. The greatest risk in any thunderstorm that develops is for some locally damaging winds, but we're also watching for some heavier downpours and lightning that could exist in any thunderstorms as well. So as they mentioned this could change your outdoor plan so we wanted to give you a heads up about it and I do think the risk for a severe storm is higher in the western half of the state than it is in eastern Connecticut because as these storms move in they will generally tend to weaken as they move into more stable air so you have a greater chance of seeing a severe storm in Danbury than you have in New Haven or especially New London where that risk is much lower temperatures right now are in the upper 70s to low 80s we've got blue skies over Hartford. It looking a little bit hazy though for the New Haven area and the humidity will only continue to rise. No issues tonight. Lows in the 60s tomorrow. Again, a dry start, but a stormy finish. We'll talk more about it. Plus some big heat ahead for next week coming up. And stay updated on changes throughout the day tomorrow with our Fox 61 weather app. You'll be able to track the rain and see when uh, it will hit your neighborhood. All right, a Fox 61 follow up now. The suspect in a crash that killed a construction worker met a judge today. It's a story we first brought you as breaking news last night. Friends and family who attended the arraignment claim it was all an accident. Fox 61's Matt Karen is outside Hartford Superior Court with the new details. Matt. Well, the friends, family and even co-workers of Tommy Nugent showed up in court today to support him. They say this was all a tragic accident that was caused by an unexpected medical episode. This was an extremely breathless operation of the motor vehicle. It's our first look at 25-year-old Tommy Nugent, the man charged with hitting and killing 54-year-old Jose Diaz Nieves of East Hartford with his car as Diaz Nieves was working roadside construction on West Boulevard in Hartford. I feel sorry for the family. I, 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 my condolences sent out to all you guys, all the family. I'm very, very sorry, but we are also hurting. Inside the courtroom, we learned Nugent, who's been working at Dunkin' Donuts for the last four years, does have some history with the law. He has a 2022 conviction for engaging in police pursuit. Nugent was allegedly driving an unregistered and unlicensed vehicle when he hit Diaz Nieves. Details that were downplayed by his attorney. There are people that drive around with licensed and unregistered cars all the time. There's probably five cars in the street right now that are unlicensed and registered. That wasn't what caused this accident. His family claims the tragedy was an accident. He is extremely sorry and remorseful. Nugent, who has a history of seizures, was allegedly called by his grandmother to take her to the grocery store. His grandmother and a five-year-old child were in the car when the crash occurred. She saw her grandson's head simply start shaking in the car. And what we believe is that he had a seizure. It wasn't his intentions to hurt anybody. We're going to support him and we're going to be here for him every step of the way. Despite a plea from his attorney to set a reasonable bond, the judge approved the recommendation of the bail commissioner. 
I am going to set the bond at $1 million. Not only is Tommy Nugent charged with second degree manslaughter, but also reckless driving, risk of injury to a minor, and failure to use a child safety seat. He will be back in court next on July 8th. Reporting in Hartford, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. The Supreme Court has upheld access to an abortion pill, Mifepristone. It's a major political and policy win for reproductive rights advocates. The court said the group of anti-abortion doctors who filed the lawsuit did not have the legal standing to even bring the case. The doctors argued the FDA bypassed its normal approval process to greenlight Mifepristone despite safety concerns. But the court didn't address that. Coming up at 6.30, I'll have more on the Supreme Court's ruling and what it could mean for Connecticut. Well, tonight, more than 100 residents at a Bridgeport apartment complex and neighbors next door are back home after an explosion in the middle of the night forced them out of their beds and into the streets. They spent the night and part of the day today at Central High School, and fortunately, no one was hurt. While Bridgeport police have arrested a person of interest, Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc reports the investigation is still ongoing. Local, state, and federal law enforcement officials are still trying to figure out what exactly that explosive device is made of and where it came from. And though they did make an arrest in this case, again, a person of interest, they're calling him. The tenants who live here, though they're back home, are still hoping for more answers. I saw smoke. I was like, what went on? So I was shocked. Scary moments for 10 year old Sophia DeSantos woken up by her mom in the middle of the night after an explosive device went off in the hallway of her North Ave apartment building in Bridgeport. And it was like so much smoke that I that I was like, is it a fire or something? More than 100 people were evacuated from the building and nearby homes moved to a school across the street as local, state and federal first responders launched an investigation. We want to reassure the community that there's no ongoing threat to the community. Police say they were first called here just after midnight for reports of a fire on the third floor. There they found an explosive device in the hallway just outside the door to one of the apartments. Though nobody was hurt, they called in the state police bomb squad and the FBI. Despite the fact there's no reports of injuries, it's a very serious incident. An incident ending in the arrest of Nelson Diaz of Bridgeport. He's been charged with disorderly conduct as a person of interest in the case. Police say he was seen walking briskly out the door seconds after the explosion. The cops later learned there were reports of Diaz, who they don't believe lives here, roaming the hallways Wednesday night and this morning. The guy just came and parked his car. And then they point him, said that was the guy that was knocking the door. Reynaldo Fernandez, who works for the property manager here, says the tenants have questions as he continues to assess the damage inside their homes. The hallway is like 50 feet and you can see all the nails coming off, ceiling like a lot of cracks. Was something really strong. Fernandez shared these photos of the apartment hit the hardest, where he says a young girl was inside. I just told her mom, thanks God she don't try to hear in the door what's going on outside. Because if she was really close to the door, uh, I don't know if she was here with us. Now, police tell us they believe this is an isolated incident and they have no reason to believe this is an act of terrorism. As for Diaz, they say he is a convicted felon and his bond was set at $25,000. We are in Bridgeport. Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Well, after much anticipation today, Dan Hurley spoke with the media for the first time since deciding to stay here in stores. Yeah, he rejected a massive offer to become the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers of the NBA to stay here and try to win a third consecutive NCAA championship. Fox 61 Sports Director Jonah Carp is live in stores, and he was there today when Hurley talked publicly for the very first time about that decision. Jonah. Hey, Brent, Coach Hurley said this day felt like it was as business as usual, like this was as normal a day as felt since this whole Lakers thing started. And this has been an incredibly emotional ride for not just Dan Hurley, but for his players and his family, his wife, Andrea, a lot of people who he sought advice from and leaned on throughout this whole journey. This was an incredible opportunity out in Los Angeles to coach the Lakers and a really difficult decision for Coach Hurley to make. And there were a lot of factors involved in making this decision, but ultimately it was family and the people here at UConn that mattered to Coach Hurley 
the most. For me, I just think this is, uh, this is such a high level of sports, especially where we're competing at. And uh, I got a chance to coach 18, 19, 20 year old kids that you could really help change their lives. I mean, you could compete for big things and win big things, but like uh, the, the impact that you have on Jordan Hawkins and his family and Donovan and his family and, and um, you know, that, that so you, you get the top sports competition, but then you also get the fulfillment too, which goes through your mind a lot. This was a great test and a great exercise for me for how I feel about UConn and how I feel about being a college coach and all the things that I value. I think situations like this come up for you, um, you know, to test your, your value system and the things that are important to you. And um, so in a way, this was a great opportunity for self-reflection um, about the things I, I think are most important in coaching in my career. Hurley says that the Lakers deal was in no way a matter of seeking leverage to improve the situation here at UConn. There was speculation of that, but I mean, look, he's coming off back to back titles. He has the resources. He has control. He's got a great situation, as good a situation here in stores as you're going to find in college basketball. And he's built trust in his players, so much so that on Sunday, Coach Hurley called Alex Caravan to seek his advice. Caravan says he was playing NBA 2K at the time, and he looked at his phone. And he's like, why is Coach calling me? But he saw it as a and they talked it through, and Caravan says he's very happy for Coach Hurley, guys. Hey, Joan, I, I'm just curious. Did he talk at all about, uh, Coach talk at all, about what his wife's reaction was when he first told her about the Lakers offer? Yeah, he, he actually did, Brent, and he said that Andrea wasn't particularly happy about it. They did talk it through. She was incredibly emotional. They both were emotional. He said there were tears, and, but they talked it through like, adults and ultimately he leaned on several people people in his inner circle not just his wife andrea he talked to his brother bobby as well who he said was very straight down the middle gave him very reasonable cases on both sides and he talked to his parents as well um and and andrea was emotional but ultimately uh he leaned on a lot of people to help sure. him make this decision and yeah. his coaching staff as well kamani young and Luke Murray, guys. Yeah, a lot of people to consult. And a lot of people very happy about the decision <laughs> yeah. that he came to Absolutely. here in Connecticut as well. All right, oh, Jonah, thank you.